It's actually been a while since I've done a video with you, but today we're going to see if you can guess which cards are better between two Hearthstone cards. But I showed these cards to a Yu-Gi-Oh creator as well for them to guess. And we're going to see who is smarter between a Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic creator. Uh, I have tried really hard to pick cards that are very comparable from one another. I also have to make sure I didn't show you cards you already seen. Uh, so if I did do that, I'm super sorry, but I don't think I up. Are you excited? It's all right, man. I'm sure my track record with evaluating cards has never, ever been wrong in the history of time. Every single card I've said was good ended up being good. Shout out to the Countess, the greatest card to ever do Yeah, okay, it. but you got you got one. You got one. <laughs> you got one you got out one. of like, what, 40? That's like a that's like a C plus in Canada. Disclaimer here. This is like your intelligence is completely completely based on how well you do here. If you don't get these right, you're just stupider than a Yu-Gi-Oh player. It doesn't matter that you don't play this game. Just want to make that very clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is by far the most pressure I've been under in one your videos okay i'm gonna give you some context clues here just for uh just to make it as fair as possible okay so both of these are from the same expansion this will be the case throughout the entire video these are both class cards usually uh usually blizzard decides to make class cards stronger you know like that's just how they've always basically done it sometimes neutrals are really really good though and these are both from the titans expansion which is currently in standard oh uh, i don't know if i need to give you any other Okay, yeah. Also, I will say the pairs get harder and harder as we continue going. This is uh, this is the easiest one you're going to get. So you better not get this wrong. I'm already kind of 50 50 in this. I'm like, damn, really? These, these cards look kind of real. I mean, they are real, but you know what I mean? They are real. Yeah, this isn't fake. I swear they're all real too. Tier six mana, four, five battle cry, resurrect a two, three and four attack minion from your class. Resurrect, I'm guessing, take out of place where dead things go, put back on battlefield. Yeah, so there's no graveyard in Hearthstone, just for the mm -hmm. record. But when things die, there is like, I'm going to use like quotations here on a graveyard. So if you have a two attack paladin creature, it would resurrect a two attack paladin creature up to three or four. What happened to before, like, what happened to like legendary naming conventions before like everything had like a cool ass name, like, you know, like Sylvanas, like the Banshee Queen or whatever, or like Ragnaros Fire, or Fire Lord. Now we just have like Tear and Sif. This is, this is like the <laughs> I, this is like the name my like second grade cousin would give to his action <laughs> figures, bro. Other card is Sif. This is six mana for a four six spell damage plus one. Improved by each spell school you've cast this game. So if you cast three spell schools, would your fireball do ten with Sif on yes. board? Yeah. All right. So I'm like looking at Tear. The first thing I think of is this card is broken in like any aggro paladin deck. It's like top of the curve. You know, you're chilling out with your little two, three, four costs. Play this on turn six after you inevitably get board wiped because holy hell does it suck to play aggro into any control deck. And it's just like, yeah, you get a bunch of guys and then you get board wiped again because it's turn seven. And then I'm looking at Sif and like the first thing that comes to mind is how many like spell schools you could realistically play and like if i had to guess maybe like throughout the course of a game you're getting like it should be pretty easy to get the three because there's like fire and arcane and like frost i'm assuming that's what they're called and uh, then you actually got every single one right there's uh, just so for the record back. there are current they're currently <laughs> There are currently, I believe, seven. Hold on. Let me actually oh double check. Right. Yeah, there's seven. There are, there are currently seven spell schools in the game. What are like the other four? Like, I could, I, like, uh, one of them's Fell. One of them's like yep. Shadow. Like, what, yep. what are the other two? Like You're Fish and Chips? Like nature. shit, man. Fish and <laughs> Chips? It's a holy in nature. Oh, <laughs> nature is in a fucking school. That's a fraudulent. Nature is a school. Wait, That's is a... it? No, it is. Yeah, it is. Why am I second? I'm really looking at the fucking list. <laughs> That's some community college looking ass spell school, dude. What is it, mage? So I guess like you're capping out at like what four? Like at the absolute best. Shadow that wizards. The generic context that mi that's missing is how like how much does do things cost that deal spell damage versus are there good two, three, and four attack minions? In both cases, I don't think it really matters. I I think that tier is the better card. I don't think it's very close. The ability to bring these back plus in Hearthstone, you have a good amount of control about when your small minions die. You can just ram them into a bigger minion and then you play this and you get like multiple things back. Maybe it's Sif. I was like looking at this and I'm like, but damn, tears so easy to use. You just slap them down on turn six and then you lose anyways because you're playing Acro Paladin. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Sif. I mean, there's gotta be like dumbass combos, right? Okay, so <laughs> so in this case, you were entirely correct. Sif is way better than Tear. I'm going with Tear. I don't think it's close. Unfortunately, you are wrong. Uh, what? <laughs> 
way. Uh, no, they get harder from the, oh my God, no way. If it was two, three, four cost minions, I think this card would be really good. But the potential with this card was with a package that basically resummoned. Uh, I'm gonna call them Jade Golems, if you know what those are. But it never really came to fruition for tier because you didn't really need it. There's just a spell that does what he does, but arguably just better. Sif, on the other hand, for six mana, you can make a Maligos. And you remember Maligos from Classic? Oh God, don't, don't remind uh, me. <laughs> So you could actually get to a pretty big spell damage total like very quickly. Now, here's the biggest thing I think that maybe you're focusing on as a magic player is you could block with those minions. Remember, like Hearthstone can't block with those minions. I remember that Hearthstone okay. can't block. I just thought that, you know, they like minions like double like as like removal in Hearthstone. You take out the opponent's board. So it's just that you think even that I feel like in hmm. magic, they would double down more as like removal, right? Because you can actually block with them. People just people just look at their your minion and go like, huh, uh, whatever, huh. and then go huh. face, right? Huh. Well, so, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two. Both of these are from Festival of Legends. This is the expansion before Titans. One of these is a legendary spell. The other one is not. They're both currently in standard. What are these cards? <laughs> Black rock and roll. Five mana, give all minions in your deck attack and health equal to their cost. If it were a five cost minion, it takes that and adds it to the attack, the current attack and the current yes. health. Yes. Oh, it Same adds the one one. Wow. Yeah. What was that card? Like silver hand knight that like summoned a, the four four to summon a two two. Oh my God. Now yeah. it's a nine nine that summons a two two. That's crazy. Bro, you're a, you're literally value. a hearthstone boomer, bro. That Dude. card wasn't even playable in classic. <laughs> Look, man, that, that, that shit was the goat of arena. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. It was, it was good in arena. Was what, it, I, you know what? I don't even remember. It was like, so, it was like so mid, but we had nothing better. <laughs> I'm not even joking. If they brought back classic arena, I'm going 12. Oh, like my life depends on it. It's not even a question. <laughs> I'm, I'm like the Michael Jordan. I'm like the Michael Jordan of classic <laughs> arena and big dreams. Five mana, summon the highest cost beast from your hand. It goes dormant for two turns. Like, I read I read big dreams and I'm like, damn, why don't I just play a good card? Sure, you could put like a big guy onto the board, but you have to wait two whole turns. Or at least like black rock and roll. You, you kind of just play this card, you thug out for a couple turns, and then you're just drawing like the infinite value machine. You're dropping like three, two leper gnomes. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't even think 3-2 Leopard would be legal. So neither one creates a board presence right away. One potentially creates a massive, amazing board presence in two turns. Oh God, I I, I thought this last time. I'm, I'm confident in my choice and now I'm second guessing. But if there's one thing magic players have, it's baseless confidence. So I'm gonna represent the people. I'm going with black rock and roll. I think that when you play that on five, making all of your future goodies in your deck is better than maybe you have something awesome in your hand to put down that eventually comes around and does something. Maybe if it had charge off the dormant, it would be better, but it doesn't even have that. I think both these cards are absolute poo-poo in my opinion, but I think black rock and roll <laughs> uh, overall, I mean, like you don't have to set up for it. It's just big number. It has to be black rock and roll. Okay, before I give you, before I give you the answer to this, you have to also consider black rock and roll is a legendary card, which means you can only put one and there's a chance you draw this way late in the game that your minions just, there's no more minions in your deck. Hey bro, you know me, Dege degenerate gambler. All right, Hearthstone dealing algorithm. One time I'm gonna need it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna need that well, shit on turn five. Five. You're lucky because your degenerate gambling tendencies actually gave you another point here. Okay, so you are correct. Black Rock and Roll is the better card. Both of these are like pretty mediocre, just to make that very clear. Uh, Black Rock and Roll does have a much bigger payoff, though, if you play it early enough. The problem with Black Rock and Roll is like you kind of have to build your deck around it. I don't think I've ever seen someone play Big Dreams. <laughs> Greatest to ever do it, bro. They call me the Michael Jordan of rating cards. I was hoping that the big dreams would bait you because you're cheating minions, big minions. I'm no Timmy. I am no Timmy. I, and you know what? The only things I've chosen that I've gotten wrong that were Timmy picks like the dinosaur the last time we did this. I'm not doing that today. There is no meme in. There are no meme picks. All right. This is competition. Imprisoned Homunculus. One mana, two, five. Demon. Dormant for two turns and has taunt. One mana, two, five? It's like the opposite of Leper Gnome. Even physically it is, if you think about it. Leper Gnome's this frail gnome looking. I guess what's the opposite of leprosy? Chicken pox? I don't know. Imprisoned Scrap Imp. 
two mana, three, three, mech demon, dormant for two turns. When this awakens, give all minions in your hand plus two, plus two. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Imprison homunculus, dormant for two turns, one mana, two, five, taunt. All right, first impressions. This is like, I guess if you play this, like turn one, kind of chill out. It's like a better silverback patriarch. It's like a three mana, two, five. That's crazy. It is way better than Silverback Patriarch if you play this on turn one. This card that looks card. like if you if you drop this turn one, you are the you are simply just better. You're the go. It feels like the whole dormant mechanic is like it very it really needs to be played on curve unless there's some way to do it. These look like such horrible top decks in the mid to late game. <laughs> they, like, they are. They are. Oh, oh, my God. Like, that's why I probably couldn't play this. So <laughs> my first thought, it makes one mana much better than two. Like in Magic, one of the growing pains is for players to realize that like one mana versus two mana is double the cost. It, it, it's like such a big deal in the early game to have the right one drop versus the okay-ish or almost does the same thing to drop. Obviously, the two mana one has a much flashier effect, much much higher potential, right? Imprison Scrap Imp, dormant for two turns. When this awakens, give all minions in your hand plus two plus two. It's a mecha's demon. So it's got pretty good stats. Two mana three three. If it had like plus one plus one, it'd have like the worst downside in human history. Let me get a shout out to some mailhouse. Two two is a lot. Like if you have like one minion, turns it into like this is basically a five five. If you have two, it's a seven seven. Four mana seven seven? Hold up. Hear me out. <laughs> Hold on. What if it had overload too? You put this shit into like classic Hearthstone like 10 years ago. Oh my God. A prison of Monculus FTK card. I'm seeing my opponent concede turn one. <laughs> I hate it because 100% if I was doing a top 10 list for a set and I was looking at these two, the Imprisoned Scrap Imp would go on the list. Not close. Like, like that's content, right? But when it huh. comes to the game, when it comes to the game, <laughs> I'm playing meta. I'm going Imprisoned to Munculus. I'm going with the one drop. These are both just so good. Do I want a monkey or do I want like a flame, a fiery flameless? You know what? I'm a gambler. I'm going to say the Scrap Imp. It had to have been good. It had to have been better. Like, Homunculus is good. Don't get me wrong. But, like, Scrap Imp is the go to value. Yeah, uh, you're entirely right. Oh, let's uh, fucking go, baby. Okay, unfortunately, you're wrong. Uh, okay. I, 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 I accept. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Homunculus is really good if you got to play it on turn one. Even turn two, I think you can let it slide. Turn three is when we get a little bit sketch. But obviously the later in the game for both of these, the worse they get. But the biggest yeah. thing, thing about Scrap Imp is like, you don't really care that it's two turns later because you play into it. Like you you draw more cards, you get more minions and then they all get buffed. These are from Showdown in the Badlands. This is literally the expansion that came out before the current one. And that means that these cards were released in, an ex in a standard rotation with the most amount of cards possible. All right, let's, let's take a look. Elise Badlands Savior. Battlecry, if your deck has no duplicates, summon five, five copies of four random minions in your deck. Riestraza is eight mana, eight, eight dragon with Battlecry. If your deck has no duplicates, summon the Purified Dragon Nest. The Purified Dragon Nest. At the start of your turn, discover a dragon. It costs four less. All right, so this is an eight mana 2020 with four death rattles. You can't convince me otherwise. I mean, sure. eight mana 2020. Yeah. It's so yeah, good. Oh, no, you're right. You're so right. It's four mana 2020. So one of these hits the battlefield and then assuming your deck has no duplicates, which I assume you build around, creates a whole board of five fives. The other is an eight eight that summons a nasty thing that takes up a spot on your board, has no power and toughness. And at the start of your next turn, you discover a dragon that's cheaper. Yeah. Now. I don't know if the Badlands contains 10 different dragons that they'd hide in this nest that all say I win the game now. That is context I do not have. Discovering a dragon, just like a random ass dragon, gets like exponentially worse because theoretically there are a lot of more poo poo dragons. On the other hand, yes. if, there are, if there are a lot of good dragons, what if we just hit them? What if we just hit the Malagos? What or if Malagos we just equivalent? hit them? Yes. What if we just bake yes. it, baby? What if we hit another Riestraza? Wait, can you uh, do that? That was allowed. I think they changed it so you can't anymore. No, Damn. They took it away. Damn, Hearthstone <laughs> really killed <laughs> our fun, bro. This one seems straightforward. It really does. 25 power and toughness. A whole board in a box versus a nest that gets you something that you still have to cast next turn. What was it? It was like the Alexstraza, like queen summoning, like, yes, like searching the Alexstraza. 
You just yeah. got a scam, baby. Yeah, 100%. That's what Hearthstone is, right? <laughs> it's scam a scam. City. That's what Yu-Gi-Oh is. All card games lead to scamming. That's basically what I learned here today. It's like this. It's like the it's like the the curve of like a card game's development, where it's like, haha, we will have fun based resource systems. Into wait, what the fuck are they doing? Turn five. Why is he dead? Did you? Okay, uh, David, when you edit this video, go go look at day nine. I don't know. You know who day nine is, right? Remember him from? Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. an old. So he played Hearthstone again for the first time in years yesterday and oh God. watching his reaction to like genuine gameplay in current Hearthstone was fucking hilarious, dude. What? Holy shit. What? <laughs> Holy shit, what happened in this fucking game? It's turn five? It's the fifth turn of the game? Turn five in like old Hearthstone, you put like maybe a 2-2 and like use your hero power and got sad because you weren't on curve. Okay, so Elise is something that you kind of have to build around. And if you kind of whiff on like your quote unquote good targets, I mean, she becomes like exponentially worse because like eight mana 2020 is pretty cool. You know, what's also cooler than an eight mana board filler. It's called a, any board wipe in the history of humankind. But Rhea Straza, oh my God, the value, the value. I, I it's gotta be Elise, right? It has to be Elise. You're the Badlands savior. Save me! Give me a point, at least. It has to be at least. This is like my inner degenerate gambler kicking in, but I'm just like, what if I just discover a good dragon? But what if I just hit yeah. Rhea Straza into Rhea Straza? It'd be so yeah. good! I think Elise is as upsetting as it is to say, I will have to take the overall good, consistent, actually card that has good build around card over my degenerate gambling dragon wife. So I'm gonna say Elise, lock it in. Okay, well, good for you. Uh, well, actually, sorry, not good for you. No. Elise kind of, she kind of sucked ass. I hate to tell you this, but it's for Estraza. How? Uh, <laughs> How is this possible? <laughs> okay, let me explain, let me explain. I told you that Druid is closest to green, right? Druid has ramp which was a really big deal because before your opponent can even like really start pressuring you, you could probably get Rhea Straza open or open on the board. And then you start playing these cheaper dragons. And some of them, again, like they're pretty impactful without you really knowing what they are. Elise is in a Highlander deck where you have to basically hope you draw this on turn eight. Otherwise the card just gets worse and worse and worse because there's only so many minions that you would want to summon from your deck that are four, that are five, five copies of it. You actually said it earlier which was like any board clear just kind of answers this. And that's basically what it inevitably came down to for Elise. Rhea Straza in a six expansion standard set was very good. Okay. Worst I, day of my life. <laughs> uh, you sure you don't want the point for scrap him? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure. Both of these cards are eight mana. Obviously one is for warrior. One is for demon hunter. I will say for both of these classes, they had supporting cards to make sure these cards were actually playable. Let's let's see what Blizzard's got cooked up. Inventor Boom. Eight mana, seven, seven. Battle Cry. Resurrect two friendly mechs that cost five or more. They immediately attack random enemies. So I'm assuming uh, if I had to put my Blizzard design cap on, they probably printed like some Maybe like some random 12 mana mech that could like reduce its cost. Maybe like one of those giant guys. And the idea was like you could scam those out and then you play boom and then you resurrect them. And then like they, they go Swark Arena and cheese. It could be cool. Maybe you're getting like 10 to 15 damage out of boom and it's kind of random. So not a huge fan of that off the rip. And then we got like Megatron unreleased. Dormant for two turns while dormant deal three damage to all enemies at the end of your turn. It's a mech and a demon. Huh. I imagine the effect of having this go dormant on the opponent's turn is pretty frustrating because anything they play is going to take three. I bet that's a very interesting moment for them. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Of course. All right. Adventure Boom, I just kind of read it as like, you know, just deal some random damage. And even if you can get like some big ass guys into play, but what are those big ass guys are good? It's like Elise. And Elise has to have been good, right? When you're just playing this and you don't get anything back or you get one thing back that isn't very strong and they immediately attack something you didn't want them to attack, that can't feel good because it is random. Don't get to punch what you need to punch. Punching is good, but random? Random is sus. 
Mag Magathiridon, it kind of just, you're basically, like, even if you cheat it out, let's say, like, you played this guy turn six, you're basically spending, like, six mana to, like, flame strike your opponent twice. Like, that's kind of, like, a weird comparison, but you're kind of oh, just, you. sure. you're kind of just summoning a big vanilla, which, you know, isn't bad in its own right. And we had, a. Uh, the Megasaur, the Ultra Saur, that guy kind of thugged it out in Arena. Tw uh, but just like a 12 12, even though that is like big boy stats, you're not really getting anything out of it outside of like the world's worst board clear. I'm gonna say Boom. I, I think Boom's kind of bussing. Man, I can't get past that feeling of the opponent <laughs> going to take their turn and just being like, these are all gonna take three more damage. What's the point of my life? That is, mmm, that like. The times where I've been on that side, like if I were on the other side of this card and I looked down and just saw all of my minions, anything I played this turn or summoned was going to have three less health. And I just like, ugh, and I just want to pass. Every time I've been in that position, it's meant that the other card did something really powerful. And sometimes it's a silver bullet. Sometimes they just caught it, caught you at the right time. But oh my gosh, I think... Megatheridon. Uh, is, I think it's Megatheridon. I'll take the Mech Demon. Okay, so you're actually right. Um, which I will say, uh, like me in particular, when I first saw Megatheridon, I thought it was going to be awful. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, Inventor Boom actually is not good. What? It's, we it's weird because there is potential for this card. They printed actually some pretty decent mechs. But Megatheridon, shockingly, because most people have the same reaction as you. Like, it looks so bad, but for some reason, it's kind of goaded. Uh, there's also cards that cheat it out, so you can get it for six mana with a weapon. Also, this goes face, so it is kind of relevant with, uh, with Demon Hunter's game plan. At the current moment, we are recording this video. Make Theodon is a better card. Damn, bro. Hearthstone, Hearthstone players really are just gambling degenerates. <laughs> By God's will, we will simply is, discover Mag Theodon. I'll tell you this right now. I haven't seen Inventor Boom once. I don't even know if the card mm -hmm. exists, to be honest, in the game. I haven't seen it. Ah, fake card. Uh, these are from Scholomance Academy. This is the expansion after Demon Hunter, and they're both neutral. And this expansion came out in 2020. Headmaster Kelthuzad. Spellburst, if the spell destroys any minions, summon them. Wait, was Kelthuzad, was Kelthuzad like a real ass dude? Yeah, he's a real dude. He actually has like a whole story behind him. Um, Damn. Scholomance, Scholomance Academy is like his school. Damn, he really graded so many shit papers. He decided to become an evil he witch, just, huh? Uh, I, tar I use like fireball targeting a spider tank. If it destroys the spider tank, I get to summon the spider tank, right? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> like a Yuko with spider tank, like that's the fucking dream. Dude, spider tank the goat. <laughs> I remember one time at like 4 a.m. in high oh school, my God. I drafted like <laughs> six spider tanks in one arena draft. I went 12 though. It was the greatest. You went 12 0? I went 12 I had, like, I had like six spider tanks. It was like unbeatable. Vectus is five mana for a 4 4 battle cry, summon two 1 1 whelps. Each gains a death rattle from your minions that died this game. That one I think is pretty straightforward. Vectus is a better rate. I imagine not a terrible value play. And depending what you get out of the battle cries, maybe some things died that are like, wait, well, hey, when this dies, you draw a card. Oh, that's good stuff. Maybe maybe they, uh, what do they do? They conjure things, they draft stuff, they duplicate stuff. Okay. I mean, there's some there's some scam value that you can get out of this. Like you play this in like Death Rattle Priest or Death Rattle Hunter. I'm pretty sure those are like the only Death Rattle decks, but you know, we'll pretend that there are others. There are also ways you could like kind of proc your own Death rattles like i guess like the yeah. easiest example is like in mage <laughs> death rattle mage uh i guess like theoretically if you have a way to like ping your own whelps you can you know just immediately trigger and get like some immediate scam that's pretty cool kill the zod seems kind of <laughs> he's cool but seems kind of he's kind of a lot like five mana i guess like the idea is like if he sticks around for a turn and you get to start just slinging spells and you just get to steal your opponent's whole board i guess like the threat is so spooky that if like kelthazad even sticks around for like one turn like oh my god it's jover obviously headmaster has the higher ceiling but you have to untap with it you have to untap and do the thing with it and i'm guessing there aren't spells that for like one mana usually just destroy anything on the board that would be pretty busted in magic in magic that starts at like two or three mana so i mean this could be like a turn seven or eight play and then kill something and steal it and that is pretty cool i i just see i just see so much more immediate threat when it comes to vectus 
uh, rather than like Keltazad, where you kind of have to play him and find some sort of either like mass board wipe or single target removal for a card that's even worth stealing in the first place. Because if you're just stealing a bunch of weenies, then like what's the point? Uh, so I would say I would say Vectus. <laughs> Uh, he's he's my guy. We got the rate versus the ceiling. Fine. Oh, God, I'm going to regret it either way because I could see it going either way. Uh, give me the headmaster. I'll take the headmaster. OK, so this one, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know if I can give you a real answer here because oh, both of and that. That's I, a point that counts as one. I, Easy. I'm going to explain. <laughs> OK, but here's okay. the thing. I actually am not able to tell you which card of the, one of these is better because they were both kind of whatever. <laughs> They were both like really niche circumstances. You can make the case that Kalthazad was probably better than Vectus, but I'm going to actually leave this up to my YouTube comments and let you let, let me know whether or not I should have given you the point for Vectus. Uh, and I told Stevie this. I said it's really hard to decipher between the both of them because they didn't really see play. But after conversing with multiple people yesterday, it turned out Headmaster Kalthazad was actually played more because of a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously because because, <laughs> because of a card called provoke uh shout out to ridiculous hat if he watches this because he's the one that reminded me of this uh yeah but, thank you hat hat you're uh, the hat hat good job hat, good job hat you made goat. the right choice so here's provoke provoke says zero mana for warrior choose a friendly minion enemy minions attack it uh and i think that would probably mean kalthazad is a little bit better than vectus but i am again curious to see what the comments actually say uh for this oh but okay I, so we're stirring it up maybe we redact the point from stevie but again i'm gonna leave it up to the comments <gasps> he picked the other one i'm gonna leave it up to the comments for which one redact you must redact <laughs> you must obey the hat it can't be both there can only is be one these are both quests. Were you playing during Angoro? Uh, yeah, I played a little bit. Angora introduced quests. The quests do start in your hand. They brought them back in an expansion called Savers of Uldum, and every single class got one for the time. This time, rather than getting like a reward, they replaced your hero power with a different one. And I'll show you. I'll give you the order for both of these. Maybe the mage hero power does two damage now. Raid the Sky Temple, cast 10 spells, reward Ascendant Scroll, and... At a random mage spell to your hand, it costs two less. All right, we're, we're gambling, already off to a good start. Unseal the vault. One mana quest, summon 20 minions. The reward is a Pharaoh's War Mask. And Pharaoh's War Mask is a new hero power. Yeah, see, I'm learning. You Give go. your minions plus two attack. This is where my my anti minionness you know, my anti-aggro, anti-swarm-with-creatures like swarm with creatures side is coming out because I immediately look at that and I'm like, that's win more, you know? Fair enough. <laughs> It seems like it's Windmore. He summoned 20. They couldn't get the job done. Oh, the attack is like permanent. That's pretty cool. It's not awful. Uh, okay. So Sky Temple, Mage, Sling Spells, Shadow Wizard, Money Gang. We're, 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 we're reading scrolls up in here. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be, it's got to be sure, at least yeah. like somewhat playable in like any spell slinger mage. Second one, unseal the vault, 20 minions. You're obviously playing some sort of zoo deck or you're playing some sort of deck where, you know, you have a lot of like unleash the hound type effects where you're just able to kind of like scam like five minions into play at once and it sort of counts towards a quest. And, but like war mask is just so mid. <laughs> like unless these dudes have charge, unless these dogs are barking, uh, like two attack, <laughs> it doesn't really, it's not all it's not that much damage it's not it's not that cool a random mage spell for cheaper i mean the one i'm gonna play a hundred million percent of the time is raid the sky temple but this isn't what would cgb play this is what got more play by the people in competitive settings uh, i'm gonna be so disappointed but i could see it being unseal the vault uh, right now what's running rough shot through magic is a deck that is very good at generating a ton of creatures with individual cards and then capitalizing off of having all those bodies it's powerful there's a card i play in magic on arena a lot called tome of legends and it it does like pull these cards from the history of magic out randomly and sometimes you get a piece of crap yep <laughs> a lot of times you get a piece of crap a sentence scroll is just always live you could always just bink some random ass mage spell you basically have babbling book the hero power like how could this ever go wrong like i'm trying to get it twisted like Give me, give me Raid the Sky Temple. Man, but casting casting 10 spells should be easier, but I can see if the right cards are in the format. Unseal the Vault, I think, has... I hate seeing this. I think it's the more powerful card. <laughs> You're entirely right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get it twisted. Um, 
Yeah, you're wrong. Uh, what? Until the Vault was so much fucking better than Raid the Sky Temple. So here's the problem with Raid the Sky Temple is you're putting this in a spell heavy deck and you're just kind of hoping that your hero power just outvalues your opponent. But there's a lot of shitty spells in standard, you know, like even in classic Hearthstone, there were spells that weren't just playable in the game. Uh, so whoa, even just kind of for two you're trying to tell me Arcane Explosion wasn't the bee's knees. Whoa, whoa. Arcane <laughs> Explosion has potential. Whoa, whoa, don't show on that card. I, I, I can't even remember like fucking classic mage spells, but Unseal the Vault was really surprising and how powerful it was because the minions themselves get the plus two attack permanently. But there's also multiple ways of like setting up a charge minion that generates other charge minions for you. I'm not going to go to the combos because I'll have to describe each card, but uh, you could kill your opponent pretty safely from like turn 10 <laughs> and you would be able to one shot people sometimes because you're still doing damage throughout the game. And there's a lot of really easy ways for Hunter to summon minions. All right, uh, this is the eighth one. There's nine. You're currently at four points out of all the, well, four points with an asterisk because I gave you the point for Vectus. Um, you got to like get a, at least one of these like right. like a Canadian get... A plus. Can you like attack locations? Like, can you like drop no. a little pipe bomb in there? Oh, okay. Uh, there are ways to, I'm going to call it interacting with it as in like, you could put a card that says destroy an enemy location. All right. So essentially these are like in, in nine out of like 99 out of hundred cases. These are kind of just sticking around till they're gone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way of looking at it. Let's read cathedral of atonement. God knows I need to after my uh, $60,000 <laughs> gambling debt to the Chinese mafia. Give a minion plus two plus one and draw a card. I mean, sure. That 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 sure reads like a priest card. <laughs> this is the most priest ass card I've ever read. Draw a card, some random useless stat boost. Sure, man. Great Hall is a two mana location with three durability. Set a minion's attack and health to three. Ooh. I don't like this is a hard one to gauge. I, I, I look at Great Hall. This card this this card is so nutter butters. It comes out a turn earlier. You could like turn a little one one weenie into like a three three. This card just basically says if your opponent ever tries to summon like a real ass dude, your opponent just tries to summon like a boulder fist ogre, a war golem, what what like the countess? You try, they try to summon like any big guy. Like you just go like haha great hall. Bye, <laughs> and you just set it to a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, yeah. So then on turn three, we play some other dorks. And on turn four, <laughs> if your opponent plays Sorts. some fatty fatty 5-5, five, five, you can turn that into a three and trade it with your one mana creature. Now the cathedral says draw a card on it. It's also a mana more. <laughs> draw a card on it. Okay. With Cathedral, it's like you get this and it's nice. It's all positive upside. With the Hall, it's like, oh God, I get to do this, but then I get to do that. But then what if I do that and this, and then I smash the two into each other and I'm the king of the world, right? Now I, I yeah. played like my four, four and I turn their five, five into a three, three and I kill it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's pretty good. All factual. It's pretty good. See the Cathedral though is so consistent. It's such, it's like all upside, man. There's, there's like no bad situation. You play the hall when you're just getting beaten down by three, four, fours, and you're like, oh, great. One of them now has three attack. Good job. You know, you did it. Like, oh my God. Tell, you cannot tell me a universe where a great hall is not just like the most cracked location of all time. It's, sorry, is this, that's your answer I'm guessing, right? That's my answer. You're fucking wrong, buddy. This is the great most hall? scam game show of all time. <laughs> what have you, how, why are you vying to me? I, I think Hall's better on Magical Christmas Land, and I think Cathedral's the consistent <laughs> card. And my heart is so freaking torn, I could flip a coin. Give me the Cathedral. You're right. Yes! Oh my <laughs> god, that one was killing me. Yes! <laughs> Suck it! You, <laughs> you! I specifically made these, like, pairs to try to, like you know, pull you in one direction or like both of them look really, really good, whatever, et cetera, right? He's gaslighting Great me. Hall. Great Hall, I think was tried, but I think a lot of the time it just wasn't very valuable because you don't really want to spend two mana to make a one, one into like a three, three. Cathedral of Atonement was a staple in literally every priest deck. Well done. We're on the comeback, baby. We're on the comeback. It's well a done. rally. It's a full blown <laughs> Getting rally. Um, both of these are from the current set as well. So four set rotation, and I don't think I really need to describe anything other than the warlock one is a legendary spell. Wheel of death. Oh, gambling. My my favorite. And Yogg <laughs> in the not... box. Oh, gambling. My favorite. Destroy your deck in five turns. Destroy the enemy hero. All right. Five turns. It is hard to gauge how long five turns is in Hearthstone. It honestly feels 
like at least current meta aside, you made it sound like the current meta is insane and very fast. It sounds like five turns wasn't an insane amount of time. That's pretty cool. That's pretty... Ain't no way this card is actually good though, right? Like, ain't no way, right? Okay, well, let's read the other card. What if it's worse? Cast five random spells. If your deck has no minions, the spells cost five or more. Wowzers. I just made a mess in my trousers. Uh, so. Five random spells could be pretty bad. Obviously, if you put this in your deck, you have to somehow have a way for your deck to have no minions. Like, it, it could just be so terrible. They're not even five random spells that were cast this game. It's just in, in the game of Hearthstone, right? Yes. <laughs> First thing I think of when I read Yogg in the Box, we're, we're playing this in Oops All Spells. We're playing 30 spells. We're, <laughs> we're, all spells. Oopsies All Spells. We're chilling with Yogg. I mean, like this just has to be like the main, like this or like some other silly ass spell just has to be like the main win condition. It's probably like absolute horse shit. <laughs> like try to, you cannot gaslight me into thinking five random spells that cost five or more is like an actively good meta strategy. But actually, but what if it is? What if we just get it twisted? <laughs> What if we just hit my if opponent five times with five pyroblasts? But if you think about it, hold on. If you think Wheel of Death is better than Yogg in the Box, Yogg in the Box could just cast Wheel of Death. So, like, what's what's the oh, problem? That's true. It could be anything. <laughs> it could even be a Wheel be of a, Death. Could, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you're playing, like, some sort of sociopath or warlock, it does make sense. Like, some sort of deck where maybe you're setting up, like, just, like, infinite taunts if you have like a way to make like those taunts immune forever, uh, I don't know. If you just have like this way to basically just give yourself infinite protection, like sure, I think like Wheel of Death. Also, you have to draw it, which is kind of sus. Uh, like Wheel of Death might be okay, but Yogg in the box, the value, the value. I, but there also are spicy. like a lot of super shitty five costs and more spells. Five random spells that cost five or more what are the odds that one of those somehow wins you the game or does exactly what you need at that cost and this one's a win con wheel of death is a win con and you can only have one of it let's spin the wheel of death i'll take the wheel of death what holy shit i'm taking the wheel of death okay. i think wheel of death is just way too slow i think like sure there's probably some shitty funny cheese combo that uh is uh that probably exists with it where you could probably just give yourself infinite health and you just look at your opponent you're like haha nice game uh but i think like just there's so much more support and potential when it comes to like spell slinger mage or like spell slinger type decks that i think yog in the box is probably just the better card I'm about to blow your fucking mind, bro. Wheel of Death is like tier one. You're fucking and lying to me. When every creator, I'm gonna, I can't say every creator. When majority of creators saw Wheel of Death, including me, we all looked at this card and said to ourselves, how, why did they print this card? Because it's absolute garbage. There's no way this is gonna be playable. The ability to cast five random spells that cost five or more could be really good because we're in a four set rotation for standard which means the density of bad spells above five aren't really there. But surprisingly, Wheel of Death is a tier one deck, and it is very, very strong. And <sighs> with the patch that they just did today, there, <laughs> there's a real chance that Wheel of Death might be the best deck in the format. There's a chance. I hate this. I feel it's like disgusting. I just got fucking scammed. <laughs> you started off so that strong. And now we ended with like a Canadian C minus. Like, how could this no, happen? Listen, listen, listen. It's if you think about it, right? And this is not intentional, but for the video itself, I'm gonna call it intentional. I'm basically teaching you a lesson. Don't gamble, just go with a good strategy. No, but I can have a better strategy, which is gambling. <laughs> yes, baby. So, what, I, what, did I just get five in a row? I, hi, you what, what was know. that? Did somebody say I got five in a row? Is that if what just happened? If we count the Vectus and Kalthazal, I think you, I think you'd get five in a row. How could we not? Hat says I'm right. Yeah, Hat said you're right. I had to see how many points. Oh, I'm, all right. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna. Tell you're you. not gonna tell me. I'm gonna leave. To, I'm gonna leave it to the video so you could be on edge the whole fucking time. <laughs> What are you going to do? Release this in like five weeks? I'm going to wake up on just some random morning. You, my friend, are going to let me just wake up on some random morning, go on Twitter and find out the entire magic community has disowned me as their champion. No, no, no. Because I fine, lost to some Yu-Gi-Oh creator. This, That's listen, what you're saying. Listen, I hope you had fun. This was great. 